Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Attorney Job Logger, Law for the Everyday Layman. Today we continue with the final episode on my series of partnerships and we'll be talking about the concept of limited partnerships. So if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Also, please remember that this is only for educational purposes and is not a substitute for proper legal advice or for studying and understanding the law, okay? A like on this video or any of my other videos will also be highly appreciated, okay? So, what is a limited partnership? According to the law, it is one formed by two or more persons and has as its members no one or more general partners and one or more limited partners with the limited partners not being bound by the obligations of the partnership okay so there must be at least one general partner and at least one limited partner and the word limited must appear in the partnership name okay so uh, the purpose of a limited partnership no, is to enable persons who do, who do not desire to engage in a particular business to invest capital in that business and to share in the profits which might be expected to come no, without becoming liable as general partners for all the partnership debts. Okay? So there are actually three purposes for uh, forming a limited partnership no first for the general partners no so that they can secure or get capital from others who will become limited partners for the business and so that the general partners will still be able to retain control second for the limited partners so that they can share in the profits without risk of personal liability and third for the limited partners again so that they can uh, associate themselves with other people no who have business skills because those limited partners who they just have money and they want to uh, earn money but they don't have business skill okay so uh, this way they'll give their money and they can receive profit without having to share in the liability okay so the liability to uh, third persons no of one or more members of the partnership no the limited partners no their liability is limited to a fixed amount no the liability of a limited partner is limited to the amount of money that he put into the partnership no and this is this limited liability that's the key characteristic of a limited partnership and it's the exception to the general rule that all partners are liable proportionately with all their property for partnership debts okay so uh, let's go through some characteristics or features of a limited partnership first it is formed by substantial compliance in good faith with the statutory requirements, no? the requirements of the law. Second, one or more general partners control the business and are personally liable to creditors, general partners. Okay? Third, one or more limited partners contribute to the capital and share in the profits but they do not participate in the management of the business and are not personally liable for partnership obligations beyond the amount of their capital contributions okay fourth the limited partners may ask for the return of their capital contributions under the conditions prescribed by law we'll go through that later and fifth the partnership debts are paid out of the common fund and the individual properties of the general partners and not the limited partners okay so unlike a general partnership a limited partnership is not created by mere agreement no a limited partnership is a formal proceeding involves a formal proceeding in which the public must be informed no a limited partnership cannot be constituted orally okay so as i mentioned a limited partnership is not formed unless the formalities in 1844 of the civil code are substantially complied with in good faith okay so a limited partnership that has not complied with the law for its creation no is not considered a limited partnership at all but is rather a general partnership in which all the members are liable okay 
So let's go through the essential uh, requirements for the formation of a limited partnership. Okay, there are in general only two. No, first, there must be the certificate, no, or the articles of limited uh, partnership, no, which states the matters enumerated in 1844. It's a long list. Just uh, read it, no, in 1844. And this certificate must be signed and sworn to, okay, by the members, no. And second, the certificate must be filed for record in the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. I'll be using SEC, yeah? Okay? So this gives actual, that certificate, now the purpose of that is it gives actual or constructive notice to the potential creditors or the persons who will deal with the partnership, no? To let them know of the limited liability of the limited partners, Okay? So generally, substantial compliance in good faith with those requirements is enough, no? But a firm which fails to substantially comply with the formal requirements of a limited partnership is a general partnership, okay? Only with regard to its relations to third persons, no? Remember, no, it will be treated as a general partnership to protect the interests of innocent third persons, okay? But among the partners themselves, Okay? They will be bound to their agreement. Okay? Whatever their agreement states. If they are, uh, uh, they agree that they are a limited partnership but they have not substantially complied, then the rights arising from their agreement will bind them. It will just not bind third persons. Okay? So, uh, again, as among the partners, they are a limited partnership and bound by their agreement, but they will be treated as a general partnership with regard to third persons, okay? So, a partnership is presumed to be a general partnership. And if the partners, especially the limited partners, if they wish to avail of the protection of the law, meaning if they want to limit their liability, they must show compliance with the requirements of the law, okay? And in case a limited partnership fails to extend its term, as stated in its certificate, because uh, there is a term, no? Okay? And if it fails to uh, extend its term and register itself anew with the SEC, then the, uh, it, the partnership is divested of its limited nature and it divests the limited partners of the privilege of limited liability. Okay? Now, what if the certificate, as I mentioned earlier, no, contains a false statement? Okay? Anyone who relies on that false statement and suffers loss Okay, by reason of such reliance, may hold any party to the certificate liable, provided no the party who uh, knew of the statement, uh, he knew of the statement when it, he knew of the falsity of the statement at the time he signed the certificate, or he knew of the falsity after he signed it, but he failed to uh, cancel the certificate, have the certificate cancelled, have it amended. Okay, or file a petition to cancel or amend the certificate, no? So the law punishes the bad faith of that person who knew of the falsity, okay? Now as to amendment, okay? There are certain instances when amendment is necessary, but that is codal, okay? It's in the law, no? And it's self-explanatory. So just read 1864, no? On the matters which require amendment. I won't go through them now so we can save time. Okay, just take note that the amendment should be in writing and should follow the requirements in 1844. It should also be signed and sworn to by all the members and filed with the SEC. The amendment will take effect upon the recording by the SEC. Now, if a person who should execute that written amendment refuses to uh, do so, no, then a petition may be filed with the court for amendment or cancellation of the certificate okay also take note the certificate shall be cancelled when the partnership is dissolved or in case all the limited partners cease to be limited partners okay now the contribution let's talk about contributions no the contribution of a limited partner may be cash or it may be property but it cannot be services why because if it is services then he will now be treated as a general partner 
no? And he may be an industrial partner in that case, okay? So the contribution must be paid prior to the formation and the filing of the certificate before the SEC. And uh, the certificate must state the amount of cash and or the description of the property. However, with regard to additional contributions, no, the partners may agree that it may be made at a future time and on the conditions stated in the certificate. Okay. Now, if a person contributes to the capital erroneously, by mistake, no, believing that he has become a partner in a limited partnership when in fact it is actually a general partnership, that person who made the mistake may be exempted from liability uh, may may be exempted from liability if upon learning of his mistake he promptly renounces his interest in the profits of the business or other compensation income he says ayoko na and that's the time that uh, he will be he may be exempt from liability okay so uh, it has to take place also before the partnership becomes liable to third persons and provided of course that his name does not appear in the partnership name and if he does not uh, participate in the management of the business okay as to the partnership name I'm, as i mentioned earlier the the word limited must appear in the partnership name okay so uh cruz uh cruz jose limited like that no but the word limited okay so uh, also take note that the surname of the limited partner should not appear in the fir in the firm name okay the only time his surname can appear in the firm name is if it is also the surname of a another general partner magkapangalan sila no same last name or when the business has been carried on under a name which has his surname before he became a limited partner okay so those are the instances because uh, why if his name appears in the partnership name then he will be liable as a general partner to the creditors of the partnership who do not have actual knowledge that he is not a general partner okay now let's move on to the rights powers restrictions and liabilities of uh, limited partners okay in a limited partnership General uh, general partners still have the same rights and powers as if it were a general uh, partnership, huh? so no problem in uh, for in the case of general partners, okay? But the but the law qualifies this, no, and says that the general partners will have no power or authority to do the following acts without the written consent or ratification of the specific act by all the limited partners okay these are the following acts the general partners cannot do any act in contravention of the certificate second they cannot do any act which would make it impossible to carry on the ordinary business of the partnership third the general partners cannot confess a judgment against the partnership fourth they cannot possess partnership property or assign their rights in specific partnership property for other than a partnership purpose. Okay? Fifth, they cannot admit a person as a general partner. Sixth, they cannot admit a person as a limited partner unless the right to do so is granted in the certificate. And seventh, they cannot continue the business with the partnership property on the death retirement, insanity, civil interdiction, or insolvency of a general partner unless the right is given in the certificate. Okay? Now, while the limited partner has no right to participate in the management, he has the same right as the general partner to have the partnership books kept at the principal place of business, to inspect and copy them at a reasonable hour. He can have on demand true and full information of all things affecting the partnership and he can ask for a formal account of partnership affairs whenever it is just and reasonable. He also has the right to have dissolution and winding up by court decree. 
okay? And he may also receive his share of the profits or compensation income agreed upon in the certificate provided, ha, take note of this, provided that the partnership assets are in excess of all liabilities and subject, of course, to the preference of partnership creditors over limited and general partners in terms of payment from partnership property. Ha? Okay? Now, as a general rule, a limited partner shall not receive any part of his contribution given, no? When he gives a contribution, dyan na yan sa partnership, okay? He can, uh, he cannot, uh, he shall not receive any part of his contribution until first, all partnership liabilities, liabilities have been paid or partnership assets are sufficient to pay partnership liabilities. Second, the consent of all other partners has been obtained. And third, the certificate of partnership is cancelled or amended to show the withdrawal or the reduction. Okay? However, no, what, while I said earlier that, uh, that he cannot, the limited partner cannot ask for his contribution, the law, however, gives an exception. No? A limited partner, according to the law, may rightfully demand the return of his contribution first, of course, upon dissolution of a partnership. Okay? Or second, when the date specified in the certificate for, his, for the return of the contribution has arrived. Or third, after six months notice in writing to all the other members if no time is specified in the certificate either for the return of the contribution or for the dissolution of the partnership okay now the form of the contribution when it's uh, returned shall be in cash okay unless it is otherwise stated in the certificate or all other members give their consent now, if there are several limited partners, the members may agree that one or more of the limited partners shall have priority over other limited partners as to their return of their contributions, as to compensation income, or other matters as long as they agree. The agreement should be stated in the certificate. Okay? If it's not, then all partners stand on equal footing, okay? So the priority, the privilege must be stated in the certificate, okay? Take note that when uh, the, part the limited partner has rightfully received the return in whole or in part of the capital of his contribution, he is nevertheless liable to the partnership for any, for any sum which is not in excess of such return with interest which is necessary to discharge the partnership liabilities to all creditors who may have extended credit or whose claims arose before such return of the contribution. Okay? Now, uh, as to liabilities, a limited partner, simply put, has two liabilities. No? Liability for his unpaid contribution and his liability as a trustee. No? So, a uh, limited partner is liable first for the difference between his contribution as he actually made it and the, that stated in the certificate as actually having been made. Kung may kulang, bigay lang niya. Yun lang yun. Second, no? he is also liable for any unpaid contribution which he agreed in the certificate to make in the future at the time and on the conditions stated in the certificate. May prenamis siya. Dumating na yung panahon na ibibigay niya, bigay lang niya. Yun lang yun. Ha? Okay? It's easy. The trustee thing, no? A limited partner holds as trustee for the partnership. First, specific property stated in the certificate as contributed by him but which was not contributed or which has been wrongfully returned. And he also holds as trustee money or other property wrongfully paid or conveyed to him on account of his contribution okay now these liabilities of a limited partner can be waived or compromised but take note it can only be waived or compromised by the consent of all members now uh, take note that a waiver or compromise shall not affect the right of a creditor of a partnership who had extended credit or whose claim arose after the filing and before a cancellation or amendment of the certificate okay so the creditor can still enforce it in those enforce his claim in those cases okay 
Now, a limited partner is allowed to uh, perform certain transactions. Okay? First, he can transact other business with the partnership. Second, he can receive a pro rata share of the partnership assets with the general creditors if he is not also a general partner. And third, he may grant loans to the partnership. Okay? So, in transacting business with the partnership as a non-member, the limited partner is considered a non-partner creditor. Okay? The limited partner can be a creditor of that limited partnership. A limited partner may also loan money to and transact other business with the partnership and unless he is also a general partner, he may receive on account of resulting claims against the partnership with general creditors a pro rata share of the assets. However, take note of this following thing. No? no limited partner shall, in respect to any such claim that I just mentioned, no, he cannot receive or hold as collateral security any partnership property or he cannot receive from a general partner or the partnership any payment, conveyance, or release from liability if at the time the assets of the partnership are not sufficient to discharge partnership liabilities to persons not claiming as general or limited partners. Because if he does, if he contravenes those things, then it will give rise to the presumption that those acts were made to defraud partnership creditors. Okay? However, also note that the prohibition that I just talked about is not absolute. It will not apply if the partnership assets are sufficient to discharge the partnership liabilities to persons not claiming as general or limited partners. Okay? So, uh, I mentioned the qualification earlier, no? That if the limited partner is also not a general partner. Why? Because it is possible that a person can be both a limited and general partner. However, first, let's just uh, distinguish a limited from a general partner, no? A limited partner cannot manage the firm, otherwise, he will be liable as a general partner. While uh, as among general partners, they have the equal right of management if it has not been uh, previously agreed upon. No? A limited partner is only liable for his capital contribution, but a general partner is personally liable for partnership obligations. In a limited partnership, the name must have the word limited and there's no requirement like that in a general partnership. A limited partner is not a proper party in cases against the partnership subject to exceptions, no? which I'll talk about later on. No? But uh, of course, the general partner is the proper party in a case for or against the partnership. Okay. Now, a uh, limited partner as a mere contributor, this means that he can engage in other businesses. But uh, remember, for general partners, no, in cases of capitalist partners, they are prohibited from engaging in the same business. While for uh, industrialist partners, they are uh, prohibited from engaging in any business. Okay? Now, uh, limited partners may contribute cash or property, but not services. And uh, general partners may contribute money, property, or industry. Okay? Limited partnership is created by substantial compliance in good faith with the requirements of law and uh, general partnership may be uh, completed in any form by contract or even conduct of the partnership. No? In cases of uh, limited partnerships, the interest of a limited partner is freely assignable, can be assigned and the assignee acquires the rights of the limited partner subject to qualifications which I'll discuss more later on. No? But in a general partnership, the partner's interest in the partnership cannot be assigned uh, so as to make the assignee a new partner without the consent of the other partners. Huh? Okay? Although a contract of sub-partnership is allowed. I discussed this in a previous video. Okay? Now, uh, in a limited partnership, the name of the limited partner should not appear in the firm name, but uh, general partnership, kahit sino dyan, pwede. Okay? And finally, no, uh, in a retirement, death, insolvency does not dissolve the partnership in a limited partnership because the executor or the administrator of the limited partner has the rights of such limited partners for the purpose of settling his estate. 
while in general partnerships, the retirement death or, or insolvency of a general partner will dissolve the partnership. Okay? So, a uh, limited partner may be a general partner of the firm at the same time. Okay? Provided it is stated in the certificate. Okay? So, uh, this limited partner who is also ge a general partner shall have all the rights and powers and shall be subject to all the restrictions of a general partner. So, ano pa yung silbi? Ito yung silbi, okay? Except that, with respect to his contribution, he shall have the rights as against the other members which he would have had if he were not also a general partner. Specifically, he has the priority right as to the return of his contributions, his share in the profits, etc. No, those things I mentioned earlier as contained in 1855 to 1858. Okay? So, uh, may benefit ang pagiging limited partner. You may priority right ka. Okay? So, uh, that's the advantage. No? Now, also remember that a limited partner is a uh, mere contributor. I mentioned this na. No? So, he cannot be a proper party in a case for for or against the partnership okay unless the action no the case is to enforce his individual rights against the partnership or that limited partner he can be a defendant in an action filed against him by the partnership to enforce his liability to the partnership such as uh pulang yung contribution ganun. okay now a limited partner's interest is assignable i also mentioned this earlier but the assignee, no, the transferee, the assignee does not become a limited partner unless he substitutes that limited partner. In other words, unless he becomes a substituted limited partner. So there's a difference between a mere assignee and a substituted li limited partner. Okay, let's first talk about a mere assignee. The assignee has no right to require any information or account of the partnership transactions or to inspect the books. He is only entitled to receive the share of the profits or other compensation income or the return of the contribution to which the assigner may have been entitled. No? Kung ano yung makukuha nung nagbigay sa kanya, makukuha niya rin. But no other rights. Okay? Now, a substituted limited partner is a person admitted to all the rights of a limited partner who has died or has assigned his interest in the partnership. And how does a mere assignee become a substituted limited partner? First, either all the members of the partnership give their consent or the certificate gives the assigner the right to make his assignee a limited partner and that assigner says, sige, limited partner ka na. He makes him a limited, substituted limited partner. Then, that uh, substitute will now become a substituted li limited partner. Okay? Of course, the certificate has to be amended and registered with the SEC. Okay? This is for public knowledge. No? And uh, take note also that uh, the assignee will only become a substituted uh, limited partner when the certificate is amended and registered with the SEC. Okay? So, this substituted limited partner has all the rights and powers and is subject to all the restrictions and liabilities of his assignor, except those liabilities of which he was ignorant at the time he became a limited partner and okay, which could not be ascertained or known from the certificate. Okay? But the substitution as an assignee, as a limited partner, does not release the assignor. Yung nagbigay, ah, hindi released yung assignor, okay, from liabilities for false statements, which I mentioned earlier, or for having participated in the management before he made the assignment to the assignee. Okay? And after the formation of a limited partnership, no, additional limited partners naman may be admitted. How do you do this? You just file an amendment. No, you make an amend amendment and have it registered with the SEC following 18 1855. Okay. Finally, we can go to dissolution of uh, limited partnership. No, and uh, these are the causes for dissolution. First, retirement, death, insolvency, insanity, or civil interdiction of a general partner. Ha, not limited partner. Of a general partner. 
Retirement, death, insolvency, insanity, or civil interdiction of a general partner will dissolve the partnership unless the business is continued by the remaining general partners either under a right to do so which is stated in the certificate or with the consent of all the members. Okay? Second, second cause for dissolution, no? When all limited partners cease or stop to become limited partners. Okay? Third, by expiration of the term of existence of the partnership. Okay? Fourth, by agreement of all the partners before the lapse of the period of existence. Okay? Fifth, misconduct of a general partner or fraud committed by him. Okay? Fraud committed by a general partner against the limited partners. Okay? Sixth, when the limited partner demands the return of his contribution but it was unjustifiably denied. Okay? In which case, the limited partner may ask for dissolution or winding up. A dissolution and winding up rather. Okay? So, uh, since I mentioned winding up, in the liquidation of a limited partnership, the following is the order of priority in the payment of the liabilities. Now, first, those owing to creditors in the order of priority provided for by law except those to limited partners on account of their contributions and to general partners. Second, those owing to limited partners with respect to their share of the profits and other compensation income on their contributions. Next, we have those that are owing to limited partners with respect to the capital of their contributions. And then we have those to general partners other than for capital and profits. Then to general partners with respect to profits. And then to last general partners with respect to capital. Okay? So just to remember, no, that's in the law naman, it's codal, you can just read that, no? Just remember that limited partners enjoy preference over general partners in the application of firm assets to their respective claims, okay? After uh, satisfying the claims of the general creditors and limited partners, no? What remains of the firm assets now may be applied to the claims of the general partner. First, those other than for capital and profits, then profits, then capital, okay? And the creditors of a limited partner also have the benefit of or remedy of uh, charging order, no? They may apply to the proper court for an order charging the limited partner's interest in the partnership for the payment of any unsatisfied amount of his claim, okay? Finally, on the death of a limited partner, his executor or administrator shall, shall have all the rights of a limited partner for the purpose of settling his estate, okay? And such power as the deceased partner had to constitute his assignee as a substituted limited partner, okay? So, uh, the executor or administrator can... Uh, have exercised the powers of that limited partner to settle the estate, he can also uh, constitute an assignee as a substituted limited partner. And also take note that the estate of a deceased limited partner shall be liable for uh, all his liabilities or obligations as a limited partner. Okay? So if make lang na contribution, take it out from the estate. Okay? So uh, that's it no, for uh, limited partnerships and I hope you may have picked up a thing or two and I hope to see you again for uh, my series on uh, the revised corporation code, okay? Hope to see you soon guys, okay? Bye!